so we're gonna go with the American system for this analogy. So okay, yeah. we're on level one, which is also level one, confusingly perhaps for our European and Australian listeners. <laughs> level <from>. one. <laughs> so let's imagine you have so level one is called input embedding. So you have a whole uh, sentence uh, or vector or so of words you want to give them to a machine, a transformer. Obviously, machines can't really work with. Um, Number uh, with uh, words, they need to work with numbers. So we want to convert each one of these words. Well, when I say words, um, on this, if you've been listening to this podcast, you've heard John many times talk about tokens, and that's what um, LLMs work with tokens. They're not necessarily full words; they're maybe half words, uh, you know, like parts of words. And uh, but for the sake of this podcast, I'm going to be using tokens and words interchangeably. So you have this series of really quickly for a great intro episode for people who want to dig into those subwords uh specifically episode number 626 is all about subword tokenization um but yeah fantastic yeah check check that one out it's uh it's quite an important topic so we're going to be uh talking about words and uh, subwords and tokens all the same uh because that's not the that's not the focus of this episode so you have these words now for each word you're going to need to create a vector. And not just a random vector, but a context-rich vector. And I'll give you an example. So, uh, John, let's do a quick riddle. Imagine this equation. If you take king, the concept yeah. of the word king. You know this one, right? Yeah. You subtract the concept of the word man, and you add the concept of the word woman, right? Like, what is your answer? King minus man plus woman. What are you going to get? Mm -hmm. uh, let me puzzle on this for a moment. Maybe, uh, is it princess? <laughs> uh, I feel like I'm in the right neighborhood. <laughs> uh, no, it's not Prince. <laughs> <laughs> it's Elizabeth. Uh, almost. It's a queen. <laughs> it's a queen. So basically, um, if you think about it, like if you um, take the characteristics that uh, or the features uh, of the essence of the word king, like every word in the English language has an essence, which can be described with certain features, you know, like for example, a king is wealthy, right? Like generally kings on average are pretty wealthy. Um, a king um, is pretty authoritative, right? They have, they can dictate to people what they do in their kingdom as well. They, they wear are in charge of a king. <laughs> yes, like they, they, um, they, are royal right but they're not just royal they're also they are in charge of the kingdom like a prince is royal but a king is royal and he's uh in charge he has authority of the over the kingdom um and and things like that so you can describe words with different features and if you take the essence of the word king and you subtract the essence of the word man and you add the essence of the word woman naturally intuitively you get the word queen even though we're doing arithmetic with words and not numbers and this kind of like hints towards the fact that you can actually describe a word with lots of different features and then do arithmetic using those features. And so in the sense of transformers, what we use are vectors, embedding ve they're called embedding vectors, and they have 512 dimensions. So quite a lot of uh, features, 512 to be precise. Is, are, is that, and that's specific to this attention is all you need paper. That number of dimensions is arbitrary. It could be. Yes, you can change it. Make it 256, yeah, yeah. make it. 10 million if you want, but it'll it'll obviously impact. Um, yeah, compute efficiency versus, so the more dimensions you add, the more numbers you need to represent the location of a word in this embedding space. So if you have 512 dimensions versus 256, it's twice as much information you need. However, that could be worth it. It could make more nuance and so, as you say, as you as you increase the number of dimensions towards infinity, the improvement in quality of your embeddings for whatever downstream application you have doesn't get better at some point. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah. you need to you know decide. All right, it's let's just cut it off here at five twelve. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and we're not going to go into detail on how this is done because there's solutions on this you can look up bag of words model you can look up the ngram model you can look up you can for example look you could just use already an existing embedding uh for all the the words uh like there's ways of doing it just the main takeaway from this is that the vectors that are created in this first box uh the vector embedding of the words they're not just random vectors they are 
vectors that capture the semantic meaning of the word. We'll be talking about, because this is you know language, we'll be talking about different types of meaning. And they capture semantic. Semantic meaning is the dictionary meaning. So if you open up the dictionary, it'll de- describe what an orange is, what an apple is, what a horse is, what an ocean is. And these vectors capture them. So in your vector space, uh, what you'll have is not just a random series of vectors. That's you know that's pretty easy to create, just a random series of vectors, unique vectors for, for words. But you'll actually have um, uh, vectors for every single word in the English language, which you know can range between two, between fifty thousand words to six hundred thousand or a million words, depends on how you look. But like let's say two hundred thousand words in the English uh, vocabulary. So for each one, you'll have a unique vector, but not just a random one. They will be capturing semantic meaning, and that implies that vectors that words that are similar will be close to each other. So like an apple will be close to an orange, close to a banana. Whereas, um, I don't know, like like a, a car will be somewhere else in this vector space, in a different location, because they're not that similar. Like the adjective good and great and excellent will be close to each other. The adjectives bad and terrible will be close to each other. So you just imagine this multi-dimensional, 512-dimensional vector space, which is impossible to imagine. Uh, but in this uh, space, uh, similar vectors, uh, similar wor- vectors representing similar words are going to be similar to each other. So that's box one. Right, we've converted our text into every single word of our input now has its own semantic meaning uh, or embedded vector which captures semantic meaning. 